Last week I showed you all how accurate the linear circuit modelled mag curves in the Kirchhoff EQR by comparing the Brainworks mag emulation to the Kirchhoff Blue EQ. And this week I plan on going one step further by comparing the modelled Pultec curves to not just one Pultec emulation but five Pultec emulations which include two EQP 1As and three later hardware equivalents. Now let's start off with the EQP1A emulations. As you can see, here is my preferred Pultec of choice when it comes to coloured Pultecs, the Noisash Rultec. This is a common mix bus setting I've seen used by many engineers and as you can see, the Kirchhoff has no issues in matching the curves. Now, what about UED, who at the start of their plugin journey also released linear circuit modelled emulations which included an EQP1A? Now, very, very important. To properly match the curves of the UED, you have to account for the 1.15 dB level increase the plugin has on by default. Because once you've done that, you'll find that the curves will match with ease. And just to prove this, let's randomly set the UED and then use the two bands of Kirchhoff Vintage Tube EQ to match the change in settings. And there you have it. Two bands of Kirchhoff which match the UED. AD Pultec. Now, what about if we add some high attenuation in the UAD and then turn on the vintage tube attenuation, which is coded to only work past 1 kHz? With a bit of tweaking, we can get the high end a bit closer, and if we need to tighten the Q of the high bell, then we have that option as well. Now, as you can see, the low shelf band, regardless of setting, can be matched by simply sweeping the frequencies, with the Pultec low attenuation being adapted via the shape control on the low shelf band. So as you can see for yourself, regardless of settings, in the UAD I only need the three bands of vintage tube to match. But what about a tube tech Pultec? Surely, surely I can't match those curves either. Now, as you'll notice, this sample tube tech has a very, very low roll-off in the lows, which I can sort of match with a 10 Hz high-pass filter. Not identical, but close enough for this example. Now, as you can see, the curve interaction of 20, 30, and 60 Hz is the same where all you need to do is sweep the frequency, but you'll notice that the 100 Hz setting slightly alters the band interactions which needs a bit of fine adjustment. You'll also notice that the very top end is a bit different as well, and that's okay as we have the Kirchhoff attenuation to nicely level this out. This then allows us to change and match high band settings with just a slight Q adjustment. And even if we move from 100Hz to 20Hz, which we know will alter the curve interaction, we still only need the two bands to match the curves. Same with the low attenuation. It's not perfect off the bat, but with some tweaking using the bands, you can get where you want to be. Now, let's try and move to a more unconventional Pultec in the form of the DW Fern VT5, which incorporates extra low attenuation filters and an additional mid cut. So, as you can see, you can only get 20 and 60 Hz of an EQP 1A low attenuation via 100 Hz and 400 Hz Ruby low cut, which means that the VT5 can only get EQP 1A boost and attenuation of 20 and 60 Hz. All other options will give you different results, which was obviously the intention of Fern himself, who wanted a more versatile and musical Pultec. Now, for whatever reason, I hardly ever use the low cut when I use Ruby, so let's compare the low shelf settings, which as you can see, match when sweeping the frequencies which is the same for the mid-cut, which is a very simple wide bell with a fixed Q factor. So it's very easy to match and any digital EQ could match this with ease. Now, as with the low cut, the high band frequencies have been altered as well. So some frequencies like 4K and 10K stay pretty fixed, while other frequencies skew the Q with that subtle high end roll off. But to be honest, the anti-aliasing filter has really skewed the curves the higher you boost as it's resulted in EQ cramping, which the hardware definitely doesn't have. At 16k, it really just squashes the bell as it brick walls at Nyquist. And it is quite a bit of an issue with Ruby, which is unfortunate. 
However, in regards to the high band cue, as Kirchhoff is a digital EQ, it's very easy to simply adapt the cue to match the high frequency cue of Ruby. And as I did mention earlier, Ruby has a gentle high roll off which can be closer matched via the vintage tube attenuation. And as you can see from the fundamental sweep in Doctor, using the three bands of Kirchhoff's vintage EQ can get you near identical end results. And finally, the big one. The modern Pultec of all modern Pultecs. The infamous Bettermaker EQ232P. I really, really love the versatility of the plug-in Alliance Bettermaker when it came out, but as you can see, there isn't really an issue closely matching what it does. Six bands of Kirchhoff is all that's needed to closely emulate what Bettermaker is doing, and to be honest, from a workflow point of view, the Kirchhoff band list really does work a lot better for me, as I always found the Bettermaker GUI to be really disjointed and clunky. Now, as you'll notice, I've only included five bands in my comparison, as the EQ 1 and 2 are simply just simple digital EQ curves. There's no need for all of them in this video. All you need to do is match the frequency, and you'll be able to get the right Q factor in seconds. And as with Ruby, all you need is a simple normal bell for the mid and high bands. Now, I did have to use the default high pass filter as opposed to the Pultec style high pass filter, but it still gets close to the fixed high pass filter in Bettermaker. Look, at the end of the day, as long as you can match the low shelf and attenuation, you'll have no issues whatsoever matching what Bettermaker does. And there you have it. Five Pultec plugins matched with the Kirchhoff Vintage Tube EQs and standard bells. I hope that what we can agree here is that what this video proves is that you really only need one Pultec style EQ, which in my eyes would be Kirchhoff's Vintage Tube, as it removes the limitations of all the other Pultecs. You aren't limited with frequencies and Q factors, and you can add as many bands as you like. I didn't even dive into the Vintage Tube's low mid and high mid bands, which I presume are modelled from the Pultec MEQ5, and it even includes a Pultec high pass filter. Many will argue that the fixed frequencies and subtle nuances of the curves between units is what works better from a workflow aspect as you choose your Pultec based on its own fixed musicality and how certain Pultec style curves can work better on specific sources etc etc etc. But to be honest, I don't see how using Kirchhoff would be any different. Instead of working around clunky GUIs, you simply enable Kirchhoff's band list. Put the bands in the order you want and simply dial in the bands just like you would any other Pultec. Instead of switching through fixed frequencies, you're sweeping through frequencies, which I think can give you better end results dependent on the source, as with Kirchhoff, you can work more intuitively without the limitations of whatever Pultec style you are using. You simply just don't need to own them all, because you can get them all out of one digital EQ. With Kirchhoff and other digital EQs that offer this variability, you are in full control and have the scope to do whatever you want. Now, this is obviously going to come across as me telling you to buy Kirchhoff, which honestly, I'm not. I genuinely couldn't care less if you buy it or buy six different Pultecs instead and use them all. You do what you do. All I'm trying to do is look at this from a very realistic point of view, as I'll still have those fairy dust believers who go down the route of But you won't get that Pultec magic from a linear digital EQ! It's just not possible! Now for those guys and girls, just look at the harmonic response of the other Pultec emulations. Better maker, completely clean, completely linear. Even the two sampled acoustica plugins, Titanium, which sampled the tube tech, no audible harmonics, not even close to being audible. Ruby, look, it's essentially as clean as the better maker and Kirchhoff itself. There's absolutely nothing audible from a harmonic aspect. It's completely linear. If you really want to add some mojo, you can easily add any saturation plugin after Kirchhoff to give you some extra vibe that you feel that you need. The possibilities are out there. There are great feature filled EQs like Kirchhoff, Fab Filter, Equilibrium and Tone Boosters that allow you to do more with just one plugin instance. And to follow on this trend, next week or the week after, I am going to look at the two SSL style curves that Kirchhoff offers 
and compare that to some big SSL plugins. If you're interested, then I do suggest you subscribe so you don't miss out. And if you really appreciate all the hard work that I do here, there is now super thanks enabled on the videos, so you could give me something back if you feel that I've gave you something of value. It really helps to support me and the channel, but if not, a like <laughs> will suffice. But either way, as always, guys and girls, thank you for your time, and my name's Paul Third, and I'll see you again next week.